In this video, we want to define a gravitational potential energy function. To review, let's see where we are. We start with a system of things, things that are interacting by an internal force, in this case, gravity. I have these books, but they, and they are interacting with the Earth, and they interact via gravity. We then change the configuration of this system by moving an object. We go in and lift the book 0.1 or 0.5 or 1 meter above the Earth. When we do that work, energy is stored in the system, and that energy is called potential energy. The potential energy change that we create by moving something can be calculated by calculating the negative work done by the internal force during that change. We want to define a new function, a potential energy function that's true for all of space and all of time, such that you can then calculate those differences just by calculating differences of values of the function instead of having to calculate the negative work every time. First, remember that in one dimension, we can calculate the work due to a spatial integral over space of the force, assuming that the force can be written as a function of space and it has no time dependence. That means if I want to calculate the difference between this potential energy function, that's then the negative integral of the force over the distance in which it moved. Now, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, the potent difference between the potential energy function evaluated at those two points is opposite the difference between the indefinite integral of the force function, which means the gravitational potential energy function is the negative antiderivative of the gravitational force. Let's take a look at what that means. My potential function is the antiderivative of the force function. To come up with a, an expression for my force function, I need a coordinate system. I'll set my zero at the ground and positive x up. Now in my one-dimensional notation, my force, which is all along the x-axis now, is just minus the ma mass of an object times the acceleration due to gravity. The negative antiderivative, then, of that force is mg times x plus some constant. How do we find that? Recall from before that only differences in potential energy matter. That means once we define a potential energy function, where the zero is of that function is a choice. We can decide where it should be. So there's a question. At what location should the potential energy function be zero? That's something we just have to choose. So for example, if I have this book that's being lifted up one meter, I've already established a coordinate system. That's a separate choice. I've put the zero of my coordinate system here at the ground. Now I'm going to say that the zero of my potential energy is also at the ground, which is saying u evaluated at zero is also zero. What does that mean for the integration constant c? If I evaluate the potential energy at x is equal to zero, well, that's just c. If I say that's zero, well, then c is equal to zero, and my potential energy function is just the mass times the acceleration due to gravity times x, which is the distance above the zero or the distance above the ground. Let's calculate the potential energy difference lifting up that book one meter. Well, that would be the difference between the potential energy evaluated at one, the final point, minus the potential energy evaluated at the ground. Well, at one meter, that's just mg, and zero, that's zero. And if I say the mass of the book is one kilogram, then the potential energy difference lifting the book one meter off the ground is 9.8 joules. Now I've said that's not the only choice, so let's do another example. Let's say I've decided that the potential energy at x is equal to one is equal to zero. That's also a possibility. That changes the functional form of the potential energy function. But that's okay, I can just find what that is. The potential energy evaluated at x is equal to one is equal to zero. Well, if I evaluate that, that's mg times one plus c. 
So I can now solve for C. C is equal to negative mg. If I plug that into my expression, then the potential energy function as a function of x is equal to mg times x minus mg. C is equal to minus mg now. I can factor out an mg, and I get the potential energy function is equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the quantity x minus 1. Let's calculate that energy difference again. The potential energy difference from raising the mass of the book from the ground 1 meter. That's the function evaluated at 1 minus the function evaluated at 0. Well, if I put in x is equal to 1 into my function, I now get 0. And then minus a function evaluated at 0 is mg0 minus 1. These two minuses cancel to give me positive, and I get the potential energy difference is equal to mg with mass is equal to 1, 9.8 joules. So the potential energy difference I get is the same regardless of where my zero of potential energy is. So the potential energy function of the gravitational force is the antiderivative of the gravitational force. That gives us an integration constant that is determined by where we choose the zero of gravitational potential energy to be.